fuel prices have been going up steeply over the few years, you've more than likely been feeling the pain at the pump. You fill up your car, drive home and watch the news and you hear of a new car of the future. It will run on some kind of new fuel like electricity or ethanol or hydrogen. You hear, it's a few years away, in the future. So as we look at the past and forward into the future of our transport needs, the question is, so are we there yet? In the years leading up to World War I, cable and steam trains, push bikes and of course railway had been the preferred way to move a large number of people and goods around and between cities. But in large countries like Australia, as in the United States, the car gained much of its popularity not in the city but on the country roads. These roads were poor and rutted out and maintained largely by the people who used them. The automobile was not seen just as a future, but the necessity to move goods and people vast distances quickly. My great-grandfather fought in World War I. He was in the 11th Light Horse Regiment, wounded in the area of Bathsheba while protecting ore supply lines for the British. As a qualified blacksmith before the war, he completed a basic trade course and started working at the Rolls-Royce Aero Plant, as well as the Smith's Instrument Factory. After the war, in December 1919, he purchased a small blacksmith shop. He saw an increasing number of automobiles in town and believed that the way of the future lined this new form of transport. Believing the age of the automobile was coming fast, he ran down the smithy works and started to sell and repair this new vehicle. He had many ideas for alternative fuels and alternative engines. I often wonder if he was still alive today, would he want our military to fight in wars to secure oil reserves as he did for the British all those years ago? Would he be looking for alternatives? Following World War I and the Great Depression, alternative fuels such as ethanol, being hailed recently as renewable E10, shown in this 1933 photo, were used to reduce fuel prices and sustain local industries in America. In Australia, following the introduction of petrol rationing in 1940, the use of charcoal gas produced from wood fumes, similar to the one here, were used as an alternative throughout the Second World War. In other countries, wood alcohol was also being used during the war. But even during these troubled times, the future seemed bright. Let us take you with us to the world of the future. Speedy planes will carry us around the world in 24 hours, from Sydney to San Francisco, New York to London. The city of tomorrow will be fantastic in design, alive with speeding vehicles, people trying to keep pace with the speed of living created by themselves. Happy modern people. Huge ocean greyhounds are speeding from one continent to another. Distance is a thing of the past. This is modern sea travel. The car of the future is a speeding live thing of steel, almost able to think for itself. Uh-oh, it looks as if this one has ideas of its own. Look out there! Duck your head! Much of this energy future was seen in the very energy that ended the Second World War. The atomic bomb. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. The mighty power of the atom is unleashed. There are even concept cars of the future running complete with its own nuclear reactor, but this concept never made it onto our roads for obvious reasons. After the end of World War II, the world was now the Western world's oyster. America was awash in oil. Australia never had the large reserves of heavy crude needed to feed its post-war growth. Still, the great southern land also seemed to have a bright future, with expanding coal exports, the discovery of oil in Mooney, central and western Australia, and later the Bass Strait. Our own future seemed secure, largely protected from the 1970s oil crisis. But since Bass Strait, Australia has not made a major oil find since. Australia has an ever-increasing number of cars on its roads. In 2007, Australia had its first million new car sales for that year. Also in that same year, New South Wales Health reported that air pollution contributed to up to 1,000 deaths, which is double the annual road toll. With China expected to have 140 million fossil fuel cars on the road by 2020, Respiratory disease is killing 400,000 people annually in China. You have to look for alternative options to fossil fuel transport because of what they consume and because of what they emit. Only an eighth of the world's people have cars and most of the other seven-eighths would like a car. Uh, 
places like China and Africa have the level of car ownership that Americans had around World War I. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, normal forecasts would tell you that in 30 years, just the Chinese car fleet will need another one or two Saudi Arabias to run it. There aren't another one or two Saudi Arabias. And the Chinese leadership is deathly afraid of falling into the same oil trap we did. Um, and that's why the top priority in their national development strategy is energy efficiency through leapfrog technology.